welcome to another edition of Bourbon and Bullets. Well, our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Idiot Boy, Prime Minister Sox, is off to the G20 meeting. He will uh, undoubtedly have a new pair of socks to show off to completely uninterested world leaders who have better things on their minds than wearing themed socks. Yes, that's what he's become known for on the world stage, when, when he's not dressing up on a sari and dancing to uh, Bangor music. All right, anyway. What's very interesting about this G20 meeting is that this will be the first G20 meeting where China, uh, China's uh, Premier uh, Xi Jinping will be in attendance since the arrest of the two Canadians and since the, which was of course in reaction to the Canadian detainment of Ming Wang Zhao. Ming, Ming Wang Zhao. I'm totally mispronouncing all these names. Oh yeah, I apologize. But uh, anyways, the the Huawei executive who was arrested in Vancouver at the behest of U.S. authorities who want her extradited and to stand trial for violating uh, U.S.-Iran uh, sanctions. And those sanctions extend to Canada's closest allies. Canada, you know, being, uh, you know, Canada or the United Kingdom are the U.S.'s two closest allies. Um, that's something that Trudeau doesn't like and tends to easily forget. And he's not alone in the Liberal Party. The entire Liberal Party is much closer to China, who does not have Canada's best interests at heart, than they are to the United States. For example, when the when this scandal happens, not a scandal, it's uh, when this legal entanglement with Meng Wanzhou happened, and the resulting arrest of the two Canadian executives that were over there, I guess, living living part of the time in China doing business. Um, Canada's ambassador to China at the time, uh, John McCallum, who was a long-time long uh, liberal uh, party member. I mean, he's a long-time, you know, I mean, he was an MP. He, he's, he was a member of parliament as, for the liberals for oh, decades now and has been in... Uh, Cat, liberal cabinets stretching back to Kretchen. Um Anyway, so he got the post of ambassador to China. And when this happened, he promptly came out and had a, a press conference with lo- almost entirely just Chinese media allowed and basically talked about how, you know, Canada would, would give in to, to chi- China's demands. And he was just flabbergasted that, that that why would why would we do the bidding of the united states what what are they to us <laughs> you know um by the way the united states i mean well canada is part of the five eyes intelligence community which goes back to oh 1960 i think even to the late 1950s when it was determined that the five anglo countries uh ireland being excluded of new zealand australia the United Kingdom, the United States, and Canada were the most trusted in the Cold War. Those were the five countries. When it really came down to it, you know, even though we had other NATO allies, the five Anglo countries, excluding Ireland, were to be the most trusted, and they they had the most intimate sharing of intelligence. So, you know, we have a long, long history of very close. I mean, I I shouldn't have to say this. You know, our American cousins are basically about as close as you can get to be Canadian uh, without being Canadian. Uh, they would say vice versa about Canadians uh, being as close to being American as without actually being American. Um, of course, many Canadians, especially those uh, with the leftward bent, constantly like to define Canadians as how we're not like Americans. But, you know, it's tiresome because, let's face it, they're... Besides some pretty minor cultural differences, I mean, this is excluding Quebec, obviously, um, we're pretty alike. Um, we're not alike. We're not, we don't have that much in common with China, as much as like Trudeau would like to take us in that direction. He is, you know, he admires the basic dictatorship of China, which means, you know, no free access to the internet, no free speech, being detained without, without trial for indefinitely. All the things that he admired and all the things that the, Previous, um, well, not Paul Martin, but uh, John Chrétien uh, also liked to detain people with uh, as long as he could without trial. That was uh, 
as you did back in 97 for the uh, APAC conference, the Asia Pacific, um, well, I think I got the acronym wrong, but whatever. Anyways, he, he famously uh, did that to a bunch of protesters back then. Now, Jean Chrétien, in this latest um, contretemps with, the, with, the chi with China, uh, he he volunteered to go over there and be a special en envoy for Canada. And his advice was to, apparently this was leaked, he was talking to a business conference, was that uh, just like John McCallum said, oh, well, just just give in, just give in to their demands. I mean, what, you know, what, let's just unfreeze relationship, uh, unfreeze diplomatic relations. And we'll just, just, you know, let, let, uh, who cares if she, if she was selling, uh, uh, technology to Iran against international treaties. Eh, what's that to us? It's just, you know, so so his attitude is we need to cozy up to China and totally alienate the United States. Does, does it make sense to anybody? Has he looked at a map? Has he looked at, at our respective cultures? So he wants to, you know, our, our, our largest trading partner, our closest ally to the South, we share the largest undefended border in the world. He wants to piss them off by handing over Meng Wanzhou back to the Chinese in hopes that we'll get points with the Chinese. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, there you go. That's liberal part, party foreign policy. Piss off your allies and cozy up to your enemies. And make no mistake, China is not, China is not our ally. China is the enemy. There, there, there's sort of this... The new Cold War we're in with China, you know, it's not discussed. It's it's we try to pretend that you know really they're they're you know they're sort of uh, you know we're rivals, but uh, it's not really no. It, it's a Cold War. They are you know exercising not just economic might but military might. Um, now, to go further afield, we also have Google who is helping build. Um, a surveillance system for the Chinese government. Now, imagine during the, the former Cold War, the Soviet Union, that IBM was building computer systems for the Soviets. That that is that is exactly what Google is doing, and it's not just Google. It's you know, pretty much all of Sil Silicon Valley is working for the enemy. And yes, I'm going to repeat myself. They are the enemy. Okay, they do not have the West's best interests at heart. To support China means that you are supporting lack of liberty. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about living under an authoritarian state if you, if you want to see the rise of China. That's, that's the end game of it. And of course, as we've seen in Silicon Valley, authoritarian <laughs> impulses, they, they, no wonder they work with China. They mesh so well. And as we've seen from the Liberal Party of, of Canada, when they want to uh, suspend social media, their, their authoritarian impulses mesh so well with, with China as opposed to, um, you know, the only country in the world, the United States, that has guarantees for free speech in their amendment, much to the chagrin of the Democratic Party. Now, to go one step further, Facebook, stay with me, this is, it's not, this is not uh, as a, 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 an ethereal connection as you might at first think. Facebook announced that they want to put out a uh, a cryptocurrency called Libra is backed by about five major financial institutions. This is a very dangerous precedent. Now, uh, a couple of years ago, when I was writing for, I still had a day job writing for a magazine. And by the way, it was actually a, a Chinese magazine. It was bilingual. It was a Mandarin English. It was based in Vancouver, but they also had offices in Shanghai. And I went to a blockchain conference for this magazine. Um, Many, it was very, very interesting. You had people from, obviously from Europe and North America and also the Far East, mainly China. And they were very, you know, talking to developers of not just cryptocurrencies, but blockchain applications that out of China, they said the Chinese government was extremely interested in blockchain and the possibility of, of, of its applications. Of course, one of the major applications for, for blockchain are cryptocurrencies. Now, for a company that is so politicized as Facebook, a company that is so uh, has a horrible record of 
of ensuring privacy, of, you know, basically lying when saying that they're just a platform when they're clearly our uh, publisher and sent, you know, heavily censoring their users while alternative, while alternatively stealing their information to, to sell ads for them to have a cryptocurrency is a very dangerous thing. And then you add in the fact that these companies are working very closely with China, which means the Chinese communist party. See, this is the thing that people don't understand. It, Capitalism in China is an illusion. Almost everything is owned by, or you know, is there's an involvement by the Communist Party of, of China. The, China is the Communist Party. That's that's what it is. They they are involved in every fac facet of life there. Um, the social credit scheme in China means that if you know if you have any sort of dissent, you know, if your if your social credit score goes down, you can't travel, you can't get credit, you can't. I mean, your your life is seriously constrained in China, um, and you're under constant government surveillance. This is what Silicon Valley is bringing to the West, working in conjunction with China. Do you not think that that Facebook, given a successful cryptocurrency, that the Chinese government would not work with Facebook and try to leverage that into further financial control? Look at look at all the the economic chaos they tried to spread with um, their Belt and Road project, where they, they extend billions and billions of dollars in credit to these countries. It used to just be third world countries. Now they've got Italy involved in it. And of course, when they get in over the head, they said, oh, you can't pay, well, no problem. We'll just, uh, we'll just take the seaport. We'll just take this you know, few million acres of land here, which is what they did with Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka wanted to build a seaport. They couldn't, couldn't they couldn't make their, their debt payments, so China now has a uh, state-of-the-art uh, deep sea port on the Indian Ocean. And that how, is how they're expand, uh, expanding their influence around the world. You want to give these people influence into a cryptocurrency and direct access to your private information into a social network system that, cut, that spans the globe? You think they wouldn't like to get their teeth into that? And you don't think Facebook wouldn't be more than happy? To comply to work with them as they've shown already they're more than eager um uh they're more than yes they're their great eagerness to to cooperate with the chinese communist party um in all sorts of nefarious schemes uh from either you know sh sharing uh private information okay now i'm overstepping my bounds there's no evidence that, that facebook is sharing private information with the Chinese Communist Party. However, they are sharing your private information with a lot of other people, and there's no reason to think that one of those, you know, one of the companies that that, that they have uh, shared your information with isn't something owned by the Chinese Communist Party or is a shell for them or what have you. That is no stretch of the imagination whatsoever. Uh, it is something that they do the world over. Um, so. Yeah, that uh, would be fully to be expected. Now, back now. Let's pivoting back to Canada. I know this is getting a little bit long. I'm going to try and wrap this up with a neat bow, if I can. Um, pivoting back to Canada. Yes, I've already mentioned uh, former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien uh, saying given to China. Former Ambassador to China John McCain, who would still be ambassador, except that you know. Social media managed to leak his statements to the world about how Canada should just kowtow to China. So that cost him his job. Because believe you me, if we didn't have independent reporting. Now, yes, the news media did report it, but only because it came out. You think you really think CBC would be would be reporting on it? Would be would be telling tales on their beloved Liberal Party of Canada if uh, they weren't backed into the corner and had to? No, of course they wouldn't. They would be fully complying with the government narrative. So then on top of all that, we have a sitting cabinet minister, uh, Catherine McKenna, climate Barbie, who sits on a Chinese government panel, not an international panel, but a Chinese government panel on the environment. She's sitting with the Chinese government. Who, who are the Liberal Party working for? I mean, honestly, this, why, I mean, yes, this has actually raised questions in the so-called mainstream media. I mean, very little 
I mean, you know, they sort of talk about it and then they get back to telling us about how the yellow vests were a bunch of Nazis and, you know, try and, you know, okay, we reported on it. So, you, you know, you can't say we're not being uh, biased, but let's get back to, you know, how the yellow vests are Nazis. No, let's talk about the real danger to Canada. The country that is act does not have our best interests or the West's best interests at heart, and that is China. Now, back starting back in the 1980s, um, a lot of Hong Kong uh, residents were moving to Vancouver, my hometown. And they did so because it became clear that in 1997, the UK was, I mean, we, we kind of all, they already knew it, but in 1997, the UK was going to hand Hong Kong back to the Chinese. So they started coming over to Vancouver in droves. Uh, Vancouver got the nickname Hong Coover. Now, I, I talk about, um, going back over some of my old videos, you know, I talk about the persecution of white Christians. But, I mean, I really, that's an oversight of mine because it's not just white Christians or European Christians. It's, you know, there are Indian Indian Christians, there's Chinese Christians, but there's also Chinese Buddhists, and there's also, of course, Hindus. And all these people are unfairly treated by the current government, and they are also is up in arms about the injustices by the Trudeau government as, um, you know, as I said, European Christians. So I, you know, I shouldn't just focus on European Christians, because all of us are, all of us, besides the Muslims, are in the, and, and, even there are even modern, you know, like Tariq Fada, and even the Muslim that was denied uh, nomination by the Conservative Party, who is was warning about the um, encroachment of radical Islam. And I don't want to get too off on a tangent here. I'm still talking about China, but my point being that the Chinese from Hong Kong, and to a lesser extent from mainland China, they came into Vancouver. Did they, they didn't demand that we erase Christmas. They didn't demand that we change our culture. They, did, they, they, became, they, became, they were very thankful to be in Canada. They were, very, they were great contributors to, to the society here, you know, engineers, doctors, businessmen, professionals. They brought so much to Canada. We are now turning our back on those people. They are protesting by cozying up to mainland China if you haven't heard, because the media doesn't, the mainstream media doesn't report on it too much, there have been huge protests in, in, in Hong Kong over the last few weeks because China was going to erase, uh, was going to bring in an extradition treaty where basically people in Hong Kong could be arrested and tried in mainland China, which means they were going to be thrown in jail because, I mean, you know, the criminal justice system in, in China is, it's a show trial. They decide you're guilty, and they have a show trial, and then you go to jail. It's like the old Soviet Union. So Hong Kong, which, you know, it's one China, two systems, um, still is semi-autonomous. And they realize that if this treaty is brought in, then, you know, they basically say goodbye to Hong Kong. It will not be separate anymore. So they try to bring it in. There was a million-person uh, demonstration against it. They said that they would postpone it. They weren't ha they weren't fooled by that. They're obviously hoping that you know tempers would cool down. No, they came out in two million person demonstration. So China had to back off. So these people are risking everything in Hong Kong to protest against the authoritarian government in China. And what's Canada doing? We're saying, oh, just throw up your hands and give up. Whatever they want. Who cares if it pisses off our closest ally and largest trading partner? Well, I'd just throw up our hands. Um, yeah, so besides pissing off the United States, besides being an international joke under Trudeau, let us not turn our backs on the people of Hong Kong, uh, many of whom have come to Canada and actually helped build this country, unlike trust fund baby Trudeau. Okay, so I think uh, in a roundabout way, I managed to finally bring that full circle. So I'm going to end with that today. Thanks, as always, for watching and listening. Um, how much longer I'm going to be able to continue on YouTube? I don't know, because YouTube is really cracking down. And not only do I have to fight YouTube, I have to fight the criminal organization, Glacier Media, which, as I've mentioned in other videos, has close ties with the Chinese Communist Party, uses Chinese hackers. Uh, they don't just attack me on YouTube. They attack me across all my social media. 
Um, so I may have to rely on the future mainline BitChute. So I hope that you will follow me on BitChute. I notice my subscriptions there are going up. So I guess many of you are seeing that link in the description of doing it. So that will do it for today's Bourbon and Bullets. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell because that does help um, YouTube from unsubscribing you. I know a lot of you have told me that you've been unsubscribed sometimes two or three times. So hit the notification bell. Please give the this video a share if you like it. And until next time, this has been Bourbon and Bullets. Oh, <laughs>